Hey y'all, uh, welcome back. This is Molly Cole Creations. My name is Amanda. I am so happy to have you here. We are getting to work on some spring projects, some spring DIYs. Um, this whole video today is going to be all about carrots. I have seen some inspiration on Pinterest and YouTube and I'm going to do a couple versions of carrots um, and one is going to be with wooden beads. I'm going to make a little basket. I'm showing here some of the containers that I was planning to put them in. However, I don't end up using either of those two there. I do change my mind. I'm using some Waverly paint in the color pumpkin and some twine and I I'm also going to make some carrots made with these old spindles that um, we found some chairs for free um, on Facebook Marketplace uh, in the summer. And they were pretty, pretty rough and we don't need any extra chairs. We have a very small house and I cut them up and used them like in some Christmas projects, but I also am going to try to make them into some really cute carrots. But we're going to start with the beads. And at this point, I'm just going to start pulling out different sizes and kind of lining them up and seeing how I think they look good. Um, I'm not, I'm, they're going to be fairly small, you know, I'm not making really large. So just a regular um, size beads. I think the, the largest one was a 20 millimeter. Um, if that gives you an idea, this was an assortment pack from Amazon that I just put into this little jar. You can see some have already been used. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get these kind of all lined up how I like. And I will get them painted and dried. And we will get these little tassels added. And I think it's going to be really cute. I don't know about you all, but it is not spring here. It is still cold and miserable. We're still getting a lot of snow. We're lucky to have the sun come out even once a day. Um, but those days we are grateful for. But we are going to get our inside of our house looking much more warm and springy. And um, hopefully the outside will catch up to the rest of us because I know everyone has got to be getting that spring fever, as they call it. So I am just getting my little Ziploc bag ready, dumping some paint in. I'm going to do all the beads at once as they're all going to be the same anyhow and just simplify everything. There are a hundred ways that you can paint or stain beads. This is just one that I have found that kind of works for me. And after I coat them all fairly generously, I'm just dumping them onto this little plate so they can dry. I do kind of like to um, space them out, I guess, um, so that they don't clump or stick together. Um, and some, some always tend to end up doing that anyhow. But um, I'm going to try to avoid that while they are drying and just lay them flat and get them kind of those those clumps of paint um, just smoothed out a titch. Here you can see I am starting with the spindles. I've just set the beads aside um, so they can dry while I work on painting these spindles up. I'm using that same orange paint. Um, called Pumpkin by Waverly. I have um, those four like bigger spindles and then I have some really teeny ones that may not end up looking like carrots at all. They're gonna probably look kind of wonky. So they may just be more of um, you know a piece of decor on my tear tray. We'll see how they end up coming out. But that's the plan at this point. Once I get those painted, I'm going back to 
the beads and here I'm they are dry at this point and they're looking good and I'm just gonna start stringing them up with this roll of twine and then I will make the tassels and then I will move on to the little bucket that I decide to put them on or put them in this little bucket was actually I think um, from Hobby Lobby, a little galvanized one. I did put like some Spanish moss, like type grassy stuff in there. Um, but again, I don't end up using any of that anyhow. I, the little crate that I end up using is one of those wooden crates from the Dollar Tree. And I found that the carrots just fit a little bit better when um, I started laying everything out. So I start by with by stringing the largest. I so I decided to go with two of the same size for each size that I chose. So I start with the largest and obviously go down to the smallest. And I do them each one by one and tie a little tassel um, on each. After I get all of those tassels done and everything tied, I went and grabbed um, this little buffalo check um, ribbon. I'm pretty sure it came from the Dollar Tree at one time uh, or could have been Hobby Lobby, but it's just the real thin um, buffalo check. That I'm just tying just a simple little regular bow, nothing special to those and I put a little bow on all of them and look how cute they are okay now I am going to stick a little bunny in to the carrot container these bunnies came in a set from Target they did come with little pink pods that I my kids will end up using but I'm just going to pick one of them and then they can paint the other two um, you can tell she's already waiting and wanting to get her hands on some. So I will let her go ahead and do that. The bunny that I select, um, I, I end up using the Waverly um, wax in here is where I do that. And there's the other little basket that I attempted um, that I ended up not using either because I didn't end up liking it. I did go and cut. I wanted to use or tried to find like a little um, chalkboard, you know, those mini little tags that the Dollar Tree has. Um, or I was going to, I, you can see I cut that vinyl. I was going to just stick the vinyl to the front side of the little crate or basket um, but none of that ended up working out very well so I designed this um, little picket type sign and um, cut it on my laser machine and it ended up just being so perfect and so cute I absolutely love it We are about done with this one, y'all. I'm just cleaning up that little basket. I do kind of fool around and arrange it um, for quite a bit. And in the end, you will see in the final photos, I had to use um, one of those crates from the Dollar Tree. This was just too top heavy and it kept tipping over and everything was spilling out and it just um, was not working properly. Again, I did get this um, beaded carrot idea from um, Pinterest. And look how cute. So stinking cute, you guys. And so easy and so inexpensive. This is where I am moving on again to our spindle carrots. Um, they are painted and dried. I am, so I, I drew three little holes. They were kind of hard to see. I, I tried to show them to you. All right. Well, I, yeah, I drew three little dots. That's what I meant to say. Now I'm using my drill. Um, and I got this teeny tiny little, uh, drill bit to put three holes in so that I can use the greenery at the top. And I am 
not the best at using a drill, but this goes pretty well and pretty smooth. And these end up being absolutely gorgeous. I love them. And do you like how I'm always in my pajamas? Have you guys noticed that? Well, I am. Um, I craft mostly at night as I do work during the day and I want to be comfortable and I want to be warm. It's cold down here. That's just my little mini vacuum, uh, thingy. I got it from Amazon a couple years ago. I love it. It's very convenient when you have to do these types of projects where you're sanding or drilling, um, inside the house because it is a winter tundra outside. We can't go out there to do them. So I'm just getting my little wire cutter things. Um, I'm going to trim them down to the length and just kind of see what looks best. I did drill holes in all three of those that you see there. And um, I'm just going to kind of see what I like and go from there. These do end up being some kind of wonky looking carrots. But oh, there I was showing you I got a new cup. I was really excited about that. But they are just a lot of fun and just a good way to use some scrap pieces that I just have. And I mean, this literally costs just nothing, just free spindles, the thinner leaves. And I'm using just a titch of hot glue inside those holes to keep the um, stems, I guess, from coming out. And of course, I got to sand them because that's just me. I got to rough everything up. Um, no matter what I do, I got to rough it up a little bit. And that makes everything just look more to my taste. A little bit of paint, a little bit of greenery that I've, I've already had and been using on multiple projects. I did try out a couple of different styles of greenery um, to see which one I preferred. In the end, I do go with this grassier looking one with those skinnier little spindles. I ended up just tying them together. They, they didn't come out as carrots at all, but they still look really, really pretty. All right, moving on to project number three in this video. This is a piece of wood um, from the Dollar Tree. It's one of their just little wooden slats. It's a little rectangle, um, perfect for this. It's very lightweight. We are making another project or DIY that I saw on Pinterest. So this is another Pinterest inspired. Um, we are going to make a little carrot um, with ribbon and put it on the sign and get some greenery. We're going to make a bead handle. Um, in the end, I may have not done the wooden bead handle because you can't really see it the way I've got it displayed, but it's still really cute. And I did kind of experiment and play around with the ribbon to see what and how it was going to lay out, if it was going to work. And this ribbon is nice because it's thick and it's wired. So you can kind of like manipulate it how you need to. I do believe that ribbon is from Hobby Lobby. This is just that same mixture of the Waverly Wax with water. And I'm going to apply this. I do do multiple layers of, of paint on this little sign. I um, You'll see kind of as I go. I add this mixture first to get that stained look that I like, um, you know, of course, without having to go outside and use actual stain. Um, I will be anxious to start doing this kind of stuff outside again and use all my other regular stains and I have different colors so that's gonna be fun when the weather is nice and I can sit outside and do some of this but for now this is where we're at after I get that wax water mixture applied I am taking a chip brush and just dry brushing lightly on some of this white chalk paint the chalk paint is by Rust-Oleum it's what I've been using um, 
because it's what I have at the moment and I'm just going to use what I have and it works great. Good coverage. It's a nice paint and I have a whole lot of it. So there we go. And I'm just going to keep uh, dabbing off so I don't get too much paint on with any of the stroke. And I continue with this and then I um, kind of end up smearing it all together. And just layer by layer, I, I end up with a really beautiful look that I quite am pleased with. At this point, I am just kind of, like I said, smudging it up. I'm using a baby wipe to do that. And um, I have this this really beautiful, um, almost the off-white or light brown color that I actually ended up loving. And I do layer on a little bit more of the wax stain in here in just a minute with a thin brush but I'm just trying to bring out all those different layer by layer um, so that the board is not uniformly painted one way or another and these little boards from Dollar Tree do have a green in them which was also nice um, so it's not like it's MDF there is some sort of uh, wood green in them um, from whatever I'm not even sure what type of wood it is that they make them but it worked out just great for this particular DIY all right now that that is complete and I did let it dry took a little break now I'm gonna just um, get this ribbon applied here just kind of overlapping on either side and doing that back and forth. I am going to use hot glue to stick in the on little end there of each little loop, I guess. And I did grab um, this, I don't even know what these are called, but um, it's a little silicone tool um, to help with the burning of the hot glue where I needed to press it down. Um, I, I just got this to help out a little bit. So I'm just kind of going back and forth to each side, doing a little bit of glue, folding it back over the next way and doing a little bit of glue. Very, very simple. As I said, this ribbon is wired and so that made a huge difference um, in keeping it where I wanted it to be and kind of um, being able to to bend and curve and still not be floppy or droopy so this turned out really cute in the end and I will add some greenery to the top same greenery we have used in uh, the other when we made our other carrots um, and that greenery I don't know if I mentioned it came from Amazon I did order that so I will link that down below if anybody's looking for some fun carrot type style grassy uh, leafy greens so we've got that done there I'm just kind of floofing and fluffing and just making it all look just how I want. And then I'm gonna get those wire cutters again and start cutting some leaves off of these stems. And I will use hot glue to apply these under that top um, little loop there. And I'll use my same little tool so that I don't burn myself. Um, I used some of the same ribbon. I wanted just to have like a little bow um, right there at the top where the greenery and that first loop meet. This is just again a very simple bow, nothing to it. And I did cut the ends so that they would be um, angled or cornered. I can't remember what they call those ends where you cut it like that. But um, I did that just because it does look a little bit nicer in my opinion. And then I'm just going to glue these strands uh, or these stems in and glue the bow on top and then we will move on to the beaded handle okay 
Here, I'm just using those, a tiny little, I think they're called an eye hook. Maybe they just screw in. Um, they usually will come with like picture hanging kits and hardware. You can get them anywhere, really. Um, and they screwed right in pretty, pretty easily. I just put one on each side. I'm cutting some twine. I'm bringing those beads out again. I am not staining. I'm just using the natural wood color that these beads come in and string I did tie some knots of course to the eye hooks to keep the twine in place and then I'm just stringing the beads right on to make that cute little handle and as I said I didn't where I ended up putting it um, I did try it in a couple different places and I, I took pictures so you can see that how it would look both ways. Um, but where I ended up putting mine, I am not using the handle. It's just kind of leaning up against um, some other things on my shelf and on my mantle. So I would say the handle is totally optional. Plus, maybe if you put your, if you did your greenery a little bit shorter, you'd see it more. But like as the way that I had it, the way that I did it, you really didn't end up seeing that handle. Um, which I thought was one of the cuter elements of it, but that's okay. I still love how it turned out. This is hanging on a door, um, it's a different angle, same door. And then eventually I stuck it up here on my mantle. Um, I thought it looked really cute with all the other um, carrots and things that we had created. And then this is another angle on a different shelf. We are on to our last project, last DIY of this carrot video. We are working on a garland. It's going to be a bunny and carrot garland. Um, the inspiration for this video or for this project, the bunnies at least came from a gal on YouTube. Um, what is her name? Sammy from Unicorn Dust Designs. She made these little bunnies with the rope um, and hot glue. And I kind of took that and went with it. Now, if I were to do this over again, I would have gotten thicker rope. Maybe even like the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. This was just what I had and it was honestly a little bit thin. But I just kind of rolled it around, twisted it around. I used my little finger protector. Um, to make the main part of the bunny and then for the ears um, as I said this was a little too thin for my liking so I glued a couple of pieces together to make the ears appear a little bit thicker and then you just glue the ear just right to the top of the little bunny's head and it, uh, you just kind of kind of hold it there and it, it sticks rather well. Now the back is going to be a bit gunky from all, this is a lot of hot glue, like a lot. And it does take some time. I made three, I believe. Um, they weren't all exact. There was one that was a little bit bigger than the other, but it ended up still working cute. Then I took this, just a scrap piece of burlap. And I'm just going to cut a circle. Um, I'm just tracing it there to get the right size. And needed a new pen because my first pen didn't work, clearly. And I'm going to glue this burlap back to the backs of these bunnies so they don't look so, you know, that hot glue kind of gets a little bit foggy looking and opaque. And yeah, anyways, just to clean it up a bit. So I do that for all three of them and make sure that is good and secure. And I just used enough to get it good and secure, not so that it would come through the burlap. Now I'm pulling out some fabric from, now um, Sammy on Unicorn Dust Designs, she used, I wanna say lace maybe, or a doily um for the fabric on one of her bunnies and that was really cute too but i didn't have it but you could definitely check out her channel to watch um how she created hers and so i'm just tracing out those ears 
cutting them just barely to fit. I don't want um, them to be too small, of course, because I do have to attach them with hot glue. And then I end up kind of trimming along the edges just to make sure that they are a really good fit. And you can use any, any type of fabric. Um, I'm just very like neutral and um, I kind of have a theme going with some other DIYs that you'll you'll end up seeing but um, this fabric was perfect for what I had in mind um, but you could definitely do a more pastel or you know Easter colors pinks greens blues um, anything would just be so cute in these bunnies ears and I end up making them a one of them I did like a bow tie and one uh, like a hair bow um, and they all three looked really cute. For the carrot part of this garland, I cut some carrots that were kind of jagged. I wanted to use this fuzzy yarn. I got this yarn from Hobby Lobby last year I couldn't tell you the name or the brand or anything because the wrapper is not on it anymore but it's like a real fuzzy yarn um, but it was the perfect color and I cut the carrots kind of jaggedly so that the yarn would have like an easy place to rest when I looped it so I didn't have to use as much glue. I still had to use some hot glue, especially at the top and toward the bottom. But as you can see through the middle, I'm just kind of cruising along um, and kind of just going down one by one and do, layering it up a couple places so that I don't see that wood behind it. And then at the end, yeah, I'm just topping it off with, with a little bit of hot glue to make that end stay. And then I do that with, I, I want to say I used four carrots. We'll see. Um, and I am, again, going to use the same greenery that we have been using throughout this entire video and all of these DIYs. And I just cut some shorter pieces um, and hot glue those to the little top of the carrot. Um, these also, as you can see, they have a little hole in them um, that I, I put to string the garland um, through the yarn just to make it a little bit easier for myself. After I glued that, stuck that greenery in, I just tied a teeny tiny little bow with some twine and glued that right to the top. And I did that with all four of my carrots. And they turned out really, really cute and fun. And see, here are the bunnies with their bows and their cute ears. So adorable. And I am stringing these up. Started with the carrot. I just got a big needle. And um, that way it could go through those bunnies um, and the glue. And just did every other Carrot, rabbit, carrot, rabbit, carrot. Though I did have one rabbit with bigger ears than the others. Unintentionally, it was just kind of how it happened. And um, I put that one in the middle because it was, looked a little bit different than the other two. This ends up being so adorable. All of these have been so much fun. And I am so excited to be in this new season. And I can't wait for that to reflect outside as well as the inside. But this is gonna be a fun season before we break into summer. And I hope you all have enjoyed this video. I hope it, you receive some inspiration from the inspiration I received. I love getting ideas from other people and putting my own spin on it. And I hope that you guys can do the same, make it your own. Um, my style isn't necessarily everyone else's, but it just gives you the inspiration to create what you want to create and make your home a beautiful space for you and your family. Thanks again, y'all, and we will see you next time. Stay safe.